Welcome, bienvenue. My name is Marie Vickles and I'm the Director of Education. And today we will be learning about the artistic practice of Haitian artist, Edouard Duval Carré, as we celebrate Haitian Heritage Month at the Perez Art Museum, Miami. May is celebrated across South Florida as Haitian Heritage Month. This holiday, which was first marked in 1998 in Boston, has grown in cities across the United States that are called home by the Haitian diaspora. In Miami, this month is traditionally filled with festivities and cultural celebrations of all things Haitian. Caribbean history and cultural practice has a very important place in the framework of our museum's mission and collection, and Haiti is central to that mission, work, and focus. Our newly formed Caribbean Cultural Institute is a curatorial and research platform that promotes the art of the Caribbean and its diasporas through scholarship, exhibitions, fellowships, public programs, and collection development. Building on PAM's long-standing engagement with the region, these initiatives strengthen and enrich the museum's collection while fostering knowledge production, exchanges, and collaborations with diverse communities and organizations in Miami and abroad. The CCI aims to transform the approach toward the appreciation and understanding of Caribbean art across linguistic regions. Today, Edouard Duval Carré takes us on a journey behind the history and inspiration of his practice. He also looks at the future of what it means to be a Haitian artist as he discusses the evolution and rise of a new generation of artists that continue to define and redefine the history of an incredible people and first black nation in the Western hemisphere. We are so happy to recognize the Haitian and Haitian American artists in our collection. That include Adler Guerrier, Katia saint Hilar, Morel Doucette, Merlan Constant, Nadeline Pierre, Victor El Sai, and of course, Edouard Duval Carry. Haiti has a very particular uh, history and um, in its configuration of the new world, it was the first blow. The revolution in Haiti was the first blow to the colonial construct that Europeans had had over the, the continent, both hemispheres of the Americas. It's a, it's a very powerful story, very important story, but also a very sad one, in the sense that uh, the, the slaves of, of, of Saint-Domingue launched a major assault on the, the colonial system in general, where um, it was a bloody war that took more than 10, 15 years in where, you know, like more than 500,000 uh, slaves died. I mean, this is a history that has been seared in the, in the psyche of the Haitians. And because uh, they've really fought very hard for that freedom. Subsequently to that, I mean, it's been the, the, the country, because it did that, was literally punished by, you know, like, first of all, by the former uh, colonial power and the rest of them, because, I mean, they were not happy at all that uh, the slaves of Saint-Domingue, you know, like rose up and took their liberty in hand. So the island and the, that, I mean, that nascent nation was uh, um, isolated and has been isolated from the rest of the world for a very long time. And the, 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 the product of that is, you know, I, I mean, a very sad state of affairs right now in Haiti. So we have a glorious history, but a sad one at the same time. Artists have always looked at it. And uh, also in the creating of that nation, a whole uh, visual had to be created at the same time. The first instances of real Haitian art were not what we know of it today. Art was, you know, emulated, and of course, the the, the new elites, the new black elites of Haiti, wanted to make sure that they were seen. So those were the first, uh, uh, you know, very quite powerful images that came out of Haiti, um, and uh, also with the, I mean, by then the Republican ideals also were being pro. I mean promoted by the Republican governments in the South. I mean, they had to 
create a whole new visual for themselves and for the new nation. So, I mean, from there became a, a tradition uh, that, that persists till today. My parents, because of the situation in Haiti, left early on and we emigrated to Puerto Rico. And then they returned. So my, it was a hiatus abroad for approximately five or six years. And when I returned to Haiti, it was a big shock revelation. You know, like, what is that? So I became very interested, you know, like in, in every facet of that nation. But when I returned in my late teens, back to Haiti, I was totally shocked and totally, you know, like, how would I say it, trying to understand it. And it was, I mean, and, and that research, that curiosity has not faded over the years because it's, a, it's, a, it's, as I said earlier, it's a convoluted history, a brilliant one, and it's still evolving and it's still complicated and I'm trying to make sense of it. So, uh, at the beginning, probably, what really attracted me most was this, this religion that was, you know, like somehow, you know, like uh, uh, in the surrounding, but that you could not really discern exactly what it was. So I became very interested in that. I mean, the spirits, and that's so why I did research, you know, about that. But and also joined and and looked at it, you know, like very closely. And my work was very much informed by that. But from that, I mean, even that particular story, the Haitian food, what is it? I mean, it became very complicated when you start thinking that it's the whole history of slavery. And that slavery, you know, like the slaves did not come empty handed. They came with their beliefs, they came with their know-how, they came with their whatever they thought and uh, brought it to Haiti. And it's, it's like an incredible story that has been totally disregarded or not documented or even overlooked. And uh, this is, you know, there must be, there, I mean, you know, I'm just pointing my fingers to, to what a great uh, uh, lacking in, in research, not only in Haiti, but, you know, like for the, this whole two continents, you know, I mean, where, they, where did we come from and who were we? Everybody has a story, but it's like very, very short. And it's a little more complicated than that. I mean, I'm very interested in history and how to present it, because these are these type of histories that never had any visuals to start with. Florida is very important to Haiti. I mean, into the whole Caribbean. I cannot really pinpoint and say just Haiti. But in the case of Haitian, what has been really extraordinary is, you know, like the educational system here has managed to produce a series of, you know, like very bright, very sharp Haitian American kids. So, you know, I'm delighted to see that, you know, I mean, like in, in the movies, in the, you know, like in, in, in literature and stuff like that. I mean, I'm, I'm like really uh, uh, fascinated by the switch from French to English in that population and, you know, like how well they can still describe even, you know, after 300 years of Creole and French, you know, I mean, they can translate their, their poetry in English. I have to applaud this institution. The ma'am at the time opened its door to me and I've had various exhibits there and even, you know, like it been fine to create a whole installation uh, and, and I had it present, I, mean, I presented it there. And uh, so me and this particular institution, we've had a long, long history of support, friendship. And over the years, I mean, I, you know, like I always wish that it would expand to all types of people. And uh, they certainly have. I mean, they've collected not only Cubans and, uh, you know, like other Latin Americans and other Caribbean artists, but also, you know, like their co collection of Haitian and Haitian or Haitian based uh, uh, has increased seriously. And I applaud that and I very, uh, how would I say, I celebrate that. I have colleagues in the collections here, such as Adler Guerrier, which I met very early on. Doors were open to him and he's been, you know, like producing and, uh, and doing very interesting things in the city. 
somebody like Milan Costa, who's like a major force, all in her by herself. Uh, I mean, like the most feminist of, you know, like women artists in Haiti. She is a phenomenon, and plus an, en an energy like I've never seen. I'm delighted that, you know, like that her work has been singled out. And uh, I'm delighted that not that, I mean, that a museum like this one supports that and sees that. I think it's really important that, you know, like she's being given that kudos. Mm -hmm.